Welcome to our chapel service, which we have every Thursday at 11 a.m. We're delighted that you could be with us. If you're not here watching us live, hopefully you can check out the recording and again, pass it on as we continue to go through the word of God at our chapel services. We take time to just get built up and strengthened from the word of God. It's, it's our bread. It's the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life and uh, he has come to, he is the word. He became flesh and dwelt among us. He's the living word. And so we're, we're so thankful that we can spend time to receive from his word, to be encouraged. Maybe this is your first time tuning in by Facebook or YouTube. Uh, just to tell you, Alan and Mary Schrader, and uh, this is our home right here at Christian Assembly. Uh, we've been here pastoring since 2013, I believe it is, and, um, and we count ourselves very privileged uh, to be able to minister here uh, amongst a beautiful people and a great uh, city here in Richmond Heights, as well as being so close to Cleveland uh, proper, uh, we consider ourselves blessed and thankful to the Lord. And we know that we have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. And a little side note, we only live about four miles from the lake. So yeah, even last night we went and watched a beautiful sunset it's just oh, it gorgeous. Oh this my, we're so we feel very spoiled. Actually, we you know we originally from the uh, Great Lakes. I'm, I'm sorry, the Finger Lakes region, the Great Lake closest to us, where we were for uh, quite a, a, a twenty years. Twenty years. To, uh, we was Lake Ontario, and now we're here by Lake Erie. And I have to say that these are the best sunsets much better than the lake where we were. I don't know if it has everything to do with the position of the water on the land and how the, the I don't know what it is, but well, maybe, it is beautiful. Maybe some of our New York friends will disagree with us. Well, you gotta that, come. Okay. Yeah. You just gotta come here and experience a sunset over Lake Erie from, from Cleveland area. And then you'd be able to tell, so. Anyway, well, this morning, again, we're delighted that you could be with us. We're going to be looking at one of the Psalms, Psalm 78 today, because we believe there's a, a real message in here for us as the psalmist is giving testimony. He is giving us a, an exhortation. He is really giving us a warning here as well. As he mentions, he speaks in, by way of a, a parable. But the parable was meant to communicate or give us a word picture. And, but not only does he use word pictures, but he actually uses a live testimony or what happened to the children of Israel. And we believe that the, the word of God is, as it mentions in Corinthians, that we can learn from that which has been in the past. We can be admonished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, admonished through the scripture. And it will come and speak to us in a way, so that way it will actually uh, cause us to uh, say, oh, I'm out of, I, I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't function like that, but I could function like that. Oh, that's how I need to proceed. And it brings the adjustment. The word of God is powerful. It's powerful. And so join with us, grab a Bible, turn to Psalm 78. As we begin to walk through this Psalm, I'm not sure if we'll get all the way through it. There's, there's uh, 72 verses, but probably not. We're, but we'll, uh, we'll begin yeah. it and encourage you to spend a little bit more time throughout the week in the rest of the verses. So let's, uh, let's begin with prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, it is truly life to our bones, Lord. We live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth, Lord. And we thank you for this. And we, we position ourselves even now before you, O oh God, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would teach us. You said that you would instruct us and be our teacher. You, you're the one who is, brings revelation to us 
from your word by and and you open up our understanding and you give us uh, ears to hear lord and so we are asking for all of that as we come uh, and take in every word that you have spoken in jesus name amen yes amen hopefully you could say amen to that again psalm 78 here we go verse one it starts out this way give ear O my people to my law incline your ears to the words of my mouth so again the psalmist is starting out with this exhortation with this uh, uh, instruction to give yourself um, to incline your ear this is this is important for us especially in light of where we are as a as a nation as, as the world yeah, as the <laughs> nations of the world yeah. um, give ear oh my people I, I believe the, the Lord is saying that even today yeah. for us would you would I give ear um, to what he wants to say would I incline my ears to the words of the word of God his mouth yeah. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We believe God is speaking to us. Mm -hmm. He won't waste even what's happening here. Uh, he's given us an opportunity to yeah. hear. I think of often the raising of children when I see portions of scriptures that says, give ear, listen here uh, as a mother when i would say listen to me and they were continuing on with their play and they weren't giving me given me their full attention they they were still looking away from me they were still had their head buried in whatever they were doing i would say again to them look at me and i want you to listen and i believe that that is really what god is saying to us i, I don't keep on doing your thing and and saying yes i'm listening to you god go ahead speak to me and you continue mm. to go about your business Very good. but he is saying to us listen hear listen to me and that means full attention. That means positioning ourselves in such a way that we are looking, Very good. we're leaning. When somebody, when I, when we first started uh, interested in each other, uh, if he was talking, I was listening. He had my full attention. It was eyeball to eyeball. It was I was leaning in. I wasn't busy doing something like this because my heart was poised to hear to learn to hear his heart and so these two analogies between a love relationship between a husband and wife and a, a love relationship between a mother and child or a father and child these are good ways to think of our heavenly father because he has that he has incredible love for us and so it's not just he's waiting just to okay now you're supposed to do this and this and this and this but he is wanting to uh, give us his heart beautiful very good again we're at psalm 78 and the psalmist is is just what mary is saying just expressing this give your ear uh, he, he is admonishing because this is important. Mm -hmm. You've got to hear this. You've got to be reminded of this. So he says this, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Now, verse two, he says, I will open my mouth in a parable. Again, I mentioned that already. It's a heart to communicate. It's, a, it's word pictures. It's... A, Again, ways to uh, for you to grasp this. So he says, I'll open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. And so I'm going to bring back to your remembrance mm -hmm. uh, of things that happened. 
And then in verse 3, he says, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. So it's not anything brand new here. He's not going into any, he's, he's taking like treasures of old and uh, the stories of old, the, the encounters of old. And now because the, their ancestors, the, the Israelites, they told them, they kept telling them all along the way of Father Abraham, <laughs> of Isaac, of Jacob. And so now they're, they're, they're beginning to open up. Listen up. You've, I'm going to remind you again of some of the old stories. And he goes a step further and he says in verse four of Psalm 78, we will not hide them from their children, telling to the generations to come the praises of the Lord. Hallelujah. We, we need to hear that. <clears throat> this, this is a, a, an important admonishment because we've got to be able to say the same thing. We won't hold back from our children, ex from experiencing what God is doing in our midst. Uh, Mary and I, uh, just in the beginning of this year, before things came about here with the coronavirus, we, we were talking and praying for our children because we remember in the 70s and the 80s of having an incredible encounter with God coming into the fear of God, coming into a revelation that God would really wanted to, our attention. God was mm -hmm. really uh, speaking to us and, and, and revealing things to us. And we were really having encounters with oh God. My. Oh my. Yeah. And uh, we were just saying, oh my, our, our children, we're, we're, we're concerned that they're not really encountering God, really aware of, uh, it's not just a matter of being a, a good citizen and walking around being nice and but it, it, it's a matter of recognizing without him, we can do nothing. Recognizing that we, we live for, for his glory, for, for, for him. And so uh, we, just, we were just praying, God, let them experience mm -hmm. you in a, in a fresh way. Well, we had no idea that uh, <laughs> there, there, there was, there's a plan here. Uh, for this generation to come, yes, uh, to yes. to know the exploits and the greatness and the wonders and the works and, and the, the miracles and the power of God. Mm. So this is our prayer mm. in the midst of what we're going here. And so he says here in verse four of Psalm seventy-eight, we will not hide them from their children, telling to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that he has done. And that's that's our our faith, our belief. Mm -hmm. We are going to be able to testify of the wonderful works of God in the midst of mm -hmm. all that is going on. Mm -hmm. And so he begins in verse 5 again of Psalm 78 for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generations to come might know them, the children who were would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope, here it is, that they, this is the reason for it, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. But keep his commandments mm. and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright mm. and whose spirit was not faithful to God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is this is this is the setting the stage. Mm. The psalmist is setting the stage. He's testifying here he's exhorting he's warning like we've said already but he in this portion here that we just read he's really laying down the foundation of what it's all about mm -hmm. and what he's about to even share uh, of, by way of testimony and even about the things of old he's really saying for this reason to set your hope in God 
This is what he's after. This is the, this is the proposition uh, statement, uh, if you want to put it this way. This is what he wants you to get a hold of. And I believe this is what God wants us to get a hold of this, this day, is that we do not forget the works of God. That we don't, or that we keep his commands. And, and I can't, I, I think the commands, as Jesus said, boil down to this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And to love your neighbor as yourself. There it is. That's, that's, that's where we end up fulfilling the law. That's right. At the very heart of God. Mm. Oh. Yes. The, the, he's setting the stage of who this story is going to be about, where, what the testimony is, and who the testimony came through. Who, what's the account? Where's the story coming from? Where's the parable? Where's the things that I want you to learn? And, and the players in here, the players are the, are the Israelites, the children of God, the, the, those that he took out of bondage of Egypt and brought them into the promised land. But he's going to tell about the in-between. And that is going to be our warning. That is going to be our admonishment. The in-between from bondage into the promised land. We know that there were 40 years that they wandered in the wilderness. They wandered in hardship and, and difficulty. Uh, it wasn't the land flowing with milk and honey. Um, and so our story, our admonishment, our warning is going to come through the ancestors who actually he describes here are stubborn and rebellious generation, a heart that, I mean, a generation that did not set its heart aright. That's verse eight. So if you're familiar at all with many different scripture, it's always about the heart with God. It's not on the outward that God looks, but it's at the heart. And the heart is the heart of the matter. Always is, always was, and always will be. It's out of the heart that the mouth does speak. It's not out of thoughts that our mouth speaks, the word of God tells us in the New Testament, but it's the heart. And he is describing here as a warning to us that these that were the ancestors, those that were taken out of bondage, those that were taken out of slavery, out of being whipped and beat, out of, of lack, out of all of the turmoil, how God brought them out in a mighty deliverance. Yet their heart in those 40 years was rebellious and stubborn. And so we're going to learn a little bit mm -hmm. about them. Mm -hmm. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, let him speak to our hearts. Yes. I, I just want to say quickly um, a little testimony for me in this portion of Scripture. This portion of Scripture, Psalm 78, was one of the very first. I was just 10 years old. And I remember reading this psalm when I was 10 years old. I had sent away to Billy Graham crusade. I had watched a crusade and they said you could send away for a Bible. And so even though I was a preacher's kid and we had lots of Bibles in our home, I was so moved when I watched tears streaming down my face. I did know Jesus and I had already accepted him into my heart, but there was something that moved me so deeply of watching Countless people come and receive him, uh, receive Jesus, uh, the good news and, and the very person of Christ and having their sins washed away. I, I was, it was just like mind blowing for me and my heart was exploding. So I sent away, got this Bible and instead of, I mean, I knew, you know, like I said, I was raised in church. So I knew New Testament is all about Jesus and the Old Testament for some reason. I started here in Psalms and I re specifically remember Psalm 78. And as I began to read, 
I saw myself. And it wasn't pretty. I was a believer in Jesus. I had received him as my savior. And yet there were still obviously things in my heart because they came out my mouth and out my actions that were not pleasing to the Lord. And God used this portion of scripture by the power of the Holy Spirit that comes with the book upon the reading of the book to bring such conviction to my heart so that way I could repent. And that is the goodness and the kindness of the Lord, the conviction of the Holy Spirit that comes by the very reading of the word. Yes, it it's the kindness of the Lord yes, to it us does. because it's conviction and repentance and a time to repent and to, to, to actually cry, you know, tears. God, I'm wretched, I'm rebellious, I'm stiff-necked, I'm hard-hearted. And, and then be able to receive the healing for the rebelliousness of the soul. This is what happened to me at the reading of this scripture for me. And it still does for me to this day. I still, the word of God is that. It is the corrector. It is the adjuster. It is the mirror, as it were. I think that's why a lot of us don't like to read it, because we, we all of a sudden see our lack. But it's the whole point of it. So that way we would run to Abba and say, Oh God, Father, I have sinned. Cleanse me, Jesus. That is why we're here in this portion of scripture in this season, in this time that is in our nation, a time that I believe God has given to us, the church, to repent, to turn from our wicked ways, just like these people were wicked in their ways, and yet they were the people of God. Let us really look to the Holy Spirit to instruct us and, and, and to learn from the testimony. Yes, beautiful. Another way to say it is, may we gain application yes. in our personal lives through the word of God, through this uh, passage. Again, we've been looking at Psalm 78, verses seven and eight, that they may set their hope in God. Again, this is what God's after. Mm. By way of application, it's very clear mm -hmm. that God doesn't want us to put our hope in government. God doesn't want us to put our hope in science. Doesn't want us to put our hope in- In our bank account. In our banking account, yes. Our, our, place, our place of employment. Doesn't even want us to put our, our, our hope in our health. No, or ourself. All, all of these things are, you know, obviously provisions. God knows we have need of them. But mm -hmm. again, back to Matthew where it says, mm -hmm. seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness mm -hmm. and all these other things will be added unto us. So he's big, again, he's after this, that we may hope our hope would be in God, not a wishful thing, I uh, hope, but this hope here is a, a confident hope, uh, an assuredness that he is the way, the truth, and the life. I hope in God uh, because I believe that he is uh, the answer. And he says, and not forget the works of God. This is what he's after us. We cannot forget. That's right. Th th this, is, uh, this is one of the cautions that I hear, I believe from the Holy Spirit that, we have an opportunity to have some, learn some incredible things, witness some incredible works right. of people coming together like never before. People crying out to God. We've seen more pictures of people falling on their knees and, mm -hmm. and, and seeking uh, God and, and, and giving our hearts and our lives to God. But we can't forget the workings of God when we get through the other side of this. But keep his commandments, he says in verse eight, and not be like their fathers. Again, don't be like this stubborn, rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. 
So this is one of the things we're praying through this, all of this, mm-hmm. is may we, as we get through the other side, be found faithful in, uh, in our hope in God and our trust in God. Mm-hmm. So he begins now to, to give testimony, uh, as we've been saying, to some of the things that are happening in the hearts of the children of Israel. And he starts out in verse 9 of, again, Psalm 78, the children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the battle of, or excuse me, turned back in the day of battle. And it says here, and here, here's the problem. They did not keep the covenant of God. They refused to walk in his law. And then they forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown. So th- this is th- this is a problem here. We we cannot forget these. Yeah. We must remember his works, his wonders. We must keep his covenant. We must not refuse to walk in his law. Now, when I read law here, because I know as it describes in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, Jesus, uh, Jesus said I am the, he, that he came to fulfill the law, so he became the fulfillment of the law. So for me, when I, when I read law in, this, in, in the right context, for me, it's they refuse to walk in the ways of Jesus. They refuse to acknowledge that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's my application for today is that we, we, we cannot refuse to walk in the way uh, of Jesus. Again, Jesus was the only one that could fulfill the law and, and, and break the curse in our lives that we were law breakers. He, he's, he's the one that came to uh, make us whole and make us holy, make us law keepers because of our hope and trust in Jesus Christ. That enables me to be one that can keep the commandment. Mm -hmm. But again, in this context, he's saying they're forgetting. They're forgetting the wonders and works of God. And that's, again, application. We need to be so careful. People are putting their trust in their... I hear people talking about, well, you know, you can beat this thing. and, And they give testimony of how they... They did this and they did that and they did that. Now, thank God we can learn from people sure. what they did and, and didn't do and, and, and stuff. But to beat the virus. Yes, to yes. beat the virus I'm referring to. But the problem is if you take on the works, like somehow, hey, I did this thing and, and you forget the working of God and the mercies and compassions of God. You right. forget the faithfulness of God. You forget his wonders. And all of a sudden you find yourself patting yourself on the back and trying to instruct people on this is, this is, uh, this is the way you do it. If you don't do it my way, uh, you, you, uh, you, you miss out. It gets real, real dangerous. So. It all begins with forgetting. And that's not just the problem again, that the children of Israel have, We, God's people, so often, when we find ourselves in a place of discouragement, when we find ourselves in a place of disappointment, when we find ourselves in a place of hardship, many times it's because we have forgotten. We have forgotten what God has done for us, what he, the ways, what he's already provided for us, where the way he's already met us, the miracles like here he's talking about and the wonders he has performed in our very lives. And so often because we, and it's a problem that all of us have. We have a problem. Our, our short-term memory is, a, is an issue mm-hmm. for all of us. And we find ourselves in a new day. Uh, and just three weeks ago, God did something miraculous. And we're like, God, where are you? When it's three weeks later and we've forgotten. Um, I, I even want to make reference. Last week, I believe, we talked about, uh, we looked at the book of Revelation. And, and one thing in particular that the one the the loveless church had the problem they had was they had forgotten and god had to remember tell them remember 
where I have brought you from, the height from which you have fallen. Remember the works you did at first. And so often, you know, we forget where God, that's what happened to the, these children of Israel. They'd already forgotten it. It just happened that they were brought out of slavery and they already forgot the incredible wonders that God had performed on their behalf against their enemy, the Egyptians, Pharaoh. And, and God had already delivered them and dealt even a death blow to them. He swallowed them up in the sea, but before that, he took every firstborn, one of the plagues, and God delivered his people out from that because of the blood, the blood that was on the doorpost, and they'd already forgotten, and it wasn't that long before it had just happened. And we need to understand that it is, we can't point the finger at other people. It's got to come here. Uh, we've forgotten what God has done for us on the cross. He has already provided for us life and life eternal. He's provided healing. He's provided deliverance. He's provided provision. He's made a way for us. And we, in everyday life, when hardships comes, it is the temptation to forget. It is a problem that we have, mankind has. That's why this is so important. That's right. We spend time to encourage one another to remember, to be in remembrance. So this is, again, what the psalmist is doing here. He, from verse 12 to 16, he's... He's reminding them of the God's marvelous works. He's reminding what he did, how he divided the sea and, and he caused them to pass through. He's reminding them of their forefathers, how God delivered them and, and how he uh, gave them drink in the wilderness and brought streams from a rock. And it says verse 17. Yeah, and that's that's here's the here's the the result of forgetting. Yeah. Unfortunately, forgetting these uh, to keep his covenant, forget, refusing to walk in his ways, forgetting his his wonders, his works, his miracle works. His power. And he, he gets the result of that. The result is, but they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the most high in the wilderness. And ne next verse. And they tested God in their heart by asking for food of their fancy. So again, I want you to see that there's sin, there's rebellion, there's all of a sudden testing God, all because the children of Israel forgot yes. where they came from, forgot what God had done. The same could be applied in our lives. When we forget the wonders of God, we forget that humbling That's he's right. done in our lives. And we forget before you know it, we'll slip into sin. Well, yeah. sin will really lead into more and more rebellion. Mm -hmm. And then things start happening in our lives as a result, because you can't keep sowing rebellion and not reap some things. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, God doesn't care. And you start testing God in the sense of, you know, if you didn't do this or if you did this and that, and for not realizing it all started with you forgetting. Right, what and, he's done. Yeah, and when you when you forget, provided. you no longer declare his wonderful works. You no yes. longer put your hope in God. Remember, this is what we said. It goes back to verse seven, and they that they may set their hope in God and for and not forget the works of God and keep his commands. This is an admonishment for us. These. Will, are, con, are already speaking. They're, they're training us. They're alerting us. They're warning us. This, again, we can't look at these Israelites as, man, those people were messed no, up. No. Look at them. Wow, man. Look, how could they be so ungrateful? How could they be so harsh towards God? We have to be so very careful because 
again, if we don't remember where God, what God has done for us, if we don't seek to obey and his command, which is to love him and to love our neighbor as ourself when it's all condensed down. That is what Jesus in the New Testament teaches his disciples and to the crowd that, that had come. What's the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And the second is like unto it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And they were not, they'd already forgotten the commands of the Lord. And they weren't obeying them. And they'd forgotten. This is such admonition and warning for us, especially in this season, in this you could look at this as a wilderness season for us, for all the nations of the world. You could look at it, and especially for the household of faith, because it's not just out there that people's lives are being touched by this coronavirus. It is being, there are believers who have already passed that it has touch their lives. And so it's not just an us and a them, it's all of mankind, but especially to us, because to whom much has been yes. given, Jesus said, much is required. And we have been given much, but we have forgotten. Hmm. We have forgotten. Yeah. And in closing here then, we'll just share uh, two more verses. And then encourage you to continue to look through Psalm 78 there because there's so much here. But as a result of them forgetting and them entering into sin and rebellion and the testing of God, it says in verse 24, therefore, the Lord heard this and was furious. Now, you think of God being furious. I don't know what that does to you, but it, 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 whew, it, uh, it messes with me. Like, why is God furious? That's verse 21. Yeah, verse 21. Therefore, the Lord heard this and was furious. We don't want God furious. Mm. Uh, but why was he furious? And, and this is what we have to ask ourselves. Again, why was he furious? And it goes on to say, so uh, as a result of him being furious, so a fire was kindled against Jacob and the anger also came up against Israel because they did not believe in God and did not trust in his salvation. So he became furious because of unbelief. Yes. He became furious because they were neglecting the gift that he was giving them. I believe the same as could be said today. You know, he wants us to get rid of unbelief. He wants us to repent, to repent and, and place our trust and, in yes, him. Yes, and to place our trust in him, to call upon him and humble ourselves before him and recognize that he and he alone right. is our salvation, That's it. our deliverer, That's it. the one that picks us up, right. the one that snatches us up, the one that has been right. merciful and kind and yeah. gracious. And the more we find that to be true, that's really what we call our first love. That's right. We love him because he first, first loved, loved us. us. What is that first love? That he came to us while we we're yet sinners, the Bible says, God died for us. Yeah. But God demonstrated, this is Romans 5 eight. but God demonstrated his love towards us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were wretched, while we were involved in all kinds of things that we know in our heart that don't please God, that while we were in our shameful estate, shamed, Shame, sin is, brings such shame to a life. 
There is shame on so many people, and shame causes people to go deeper into sin. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make them pull away. It causes them to go deeper into sin. Shame is a horrific byproduct of sin. And it, pro, it, it pro, what's the word I'm looking for? Catapults you. It really does even further into sin. And, and there, is, there is a remedy. There is a way that God made for us to be free from our sin and our shame at the right, just at the right time. The word of God tells us Jesus died mm -hmm. just in the nick of time for you, just in the nick of time for me. He died in our place for our right standing before God because sin separates us from God. It, there, it's, I taught kids church for so many years and I loved using this example. Here's a, I put up on the flannel graph, it's dating me a long time ago, put up on the flannel graph a whole grouping of people. And then I would put up up above the word God. And then on the flannel graph, I would put these gray cloud over in between the word God and, and the grouping of people. And the gray cloud was the sin of people and it separated. There was separation between God and the people because of sin. But then my favorite part is to bring out Jesus and the little picture of Jesus I put on the flannel graph on the cross and I place him in between the people and God. God sending his son Jesus to die in our place for our sin, he didn't do this for himself. He did this because he loved us and he wants us to know the love of God the Father, however sin separated. And Jesus at the right time, at the perfect time, died in all of history. Beautiful. Well, in just a moment, I'm gonna have Mary lead us in a prayer of repentance, a prayer of a rededication, a prayer receiving the Lord. I know many of you have already come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your Lord, and, and uh, that's wonderful, but I, I wanna encourage you to share this with others, this teaching. I think it'll encourage people to recognize that we must humble ourselves before the Lord. We're, we're continuing to hear this from the Lord that uh, he is uh, knocking, he's uh, asking us to humble ourselves, he's asking us to repent, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's looking to us to trust in him with all of our hearts. Mm. Lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge mm. him. Mm -hmm. Again, you need to hear this from Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of that sin is Romans 6, 23 says the wages of that sin the payment is, for it. Yes, it is death. That's right. That's that death has to do with separation from God. We've been mm -hmm. separated from his holiness. We've been separated his for, from his goodness, his purpose. Mm -hmm. And so we needed a savior. Mm -hmm. And that savior again was Jesus. That we just celebrated Passover. That Passover was the blood being sprinkled on those that yeah. doorpost uh, wherever the blood was seen the death angel would pass over it and no one died in that no one died that's no one that's died. our answer today the blood of jesus is what causes the death angel so to speak to to yes. pass over us uh, it's the blood of jesus that brings us into the forgiveness into of god hearts. the holiness of god the 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 favor of god the righteousness of god and so we thank the Lord Jesus, but mm -hmm. it says we must confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. So there's a, there's a response he's looking for in us, a confessing of our need for him, our, our confession of what he's done Praise for me, uh, a confession that I will put my trust in the one that made the way for me. And so Mary is gonna lead us into that prayer. And, uh, and I just encourage you to join with us mm -hmm. in prayer right now as we close. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. We want to thank you today 
for the way that you made for us because your heart has always been for us, always been towards us. God, you have loved us with an everlasting love, your word tells us, and you have crowned us, oh God, with your loving kindness. That is who you are, God, our Father, mm. creator of heaven and earth, but creator of each one of us in our mother's womb. Lord, you created us with such love and tender mercies from before we were born. Oh God, your, your heart was towards us, not against us. And so, Lord, because of that, we thank you that in the greatness of your heart, you sent away Jesus Christ, your very own son, to, to, to make us right with you, God, because we are sinners. We've messed up. We've, we've entered oh, into all kinds of wickedness that have brought shame, shame, such shame to us. But thank you, God, for sending your own son to take on our sin, our shame, our pain, and take it on to give us forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, thank you. for the way that you have loved us perfectly with outstretched arms. You have loved us and taken on and made a way for us. I pray, oh God, for each one listening today that they would receive forgiveness of their sin by yes. humbling themselves yes. before you today yes. and yes. saying, God, I have messed up. You know I've messed up. Yes. You see the mess I'm in even right now. Yes. You know exactly that I did this. I didn't, somebody else didn't do it. I did it. And God, I pray that you would heal their heart, heal them, oh God, Thank and you. forgive them. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive of, me. Forgive me, forgive. oh God, of my rebelling against you, my wicked heart, forgive. and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I humble myself before you, God, and acknowledge that you are good, and I need your goodness in my heart and in my life. And I receive you into my life. Yes. In she, but because of the blood of Jesus, I receive you into my life. And I want to live my life to please you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, if you had a real amen in your heart, why don't you just uh, send us a little note, encourage us that uh, uh, you, you've received from the Lord Jesus Christ into your life and we can rejoice with you. We can, if you don't even have a Bible, we can even send one to you. Mm -hmm. So you can contact the church, the church office. You can contact our, our website because uh, we have comments on there that you could leave a comment or you could uh, let us know by uh, the, I keep on pointing to our phone, but by Facebook um, at, or uh, YouTube, you, you would be able to uh, leave a comment there as you join in through YouTube. So if you would, that way we could be continuing to pray for you in your new journey with Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. It was wonderful to be together. Looking forward to next time.